Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good and all is well. Today's chat is going to be about the Vicksburg Massacre that took place in Vicksburg, Mississippi on December the 7th, 1874. 75 to 300 black lives were taken on this day, all because they stood up for their rights to be treated equally and fairly as they were promised by the government. Now, it's definitely a tragedy what happened on this terrifying day. And with that being said, let's chat. As we have discussed in my previous videos, the Civil War took place between 1861 and 1865. And in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, the Emancipation Proclamation, it declared that all persons held as slaves within rebellious states are, and henceforward, shall be free. But as we all know, this was an uphill battle for black citizens. Now, after the Civil War came the Reconstruction period. Now, many would think this would be a better time for the black people or better days lie ahead, per se. Now, I mean, the Civil War, it was over. The Emancipation Proclamation was declared to free the black people from slavery. I mean, it should have been good old times. But no. It was exactly the opposite. Black people had a lot of faith in the Emancipation Proclamation, and they hoped that it would give them the you know, real freedom and open up opportunities for them. And when Reconstruction came around, they really believed things were looking up. I mean, to be honest, if things were done correctly, Reconstruction could have changed the history of the entire country. But as we all know, Nothing was done the way it should have been done. And as a result, during the Reconstruction period, thousands of black men, women, and children lost their lives to white mobs. They were assaulted physically and sexually, terrorized and lynched by not only the white mobs, but also by the hands of the white men legally obligated to protect them and to make matters worse there was little to no punishment or repercussions for those who took the lives of black citizens during this time i mean some were even protected from arrest and prosecution now though the black citizens they had it hard but they were still willing to live peacefully among those who had previously enslaved them now, the black citizens, they remain hopeful, especially those within Vicksburg, Mississippi. Now, the black citizens of Vicksburg, they were hopeful because despite the creation of black codes, black men invoked their civil rights and many voted and served in political office on the local, state and federal levels. Now, for those who don't know, black codes, they were put in place to oppress, persecute and dehumanize the black population of the South. Now, black codes, they were restrictive laws designed to limit the freedom of African Americans and ensure they could still be used for cheap labor after slavery had ended. Now, black codes, they required black people to sign yearly labor contracts. And if they refused to sign the contracts, they would be fined, arrested, or forced into unpaid labor. And black codes also restricted black people's rights to vote, bear arms, and own property. Now, despite black codes being put into place, many black men still voted and served in political offices, as we stated earlier. And one of the men who served in office or held an elected seat was Peter Crosby. And Crosby is said to have been a formerly enslaved man, according to some reports. Now, Peter Crosby, he was born in 1844 and he resided in Clark County for 20 years before moving to Vicksburg in 1864. Peter enlisted in the U.S. Colored Troops in Company C, 5th U.S. Colored Heavy Artillery at the age of 20 years old. 
And when Peter enlisted in the army, he was a laborer. And after a decade, he accumulated $5,000 worth of property. Now, this made him one of the most prosperous black citizens in the community by 1875. Crosby was also a part of a black political group in 1872 called the Vicksburg Ring, which took control of city politics. And on November the 4th, 1873, Crosby was elected sheriff of Warren County, which also made him sheriff of Vicksburg, which was also the largest city and county seat. Now, after Crosby's election, black leaders in Warren County began to use tax dollars towards black education and infrastructure, which helped all citizens, including the black ones. And of course, black citizens receiving help along with the white citizens infuriated white conservatives. The white conservatives were so enraged with anger at the fact the blacks in Warren County, Mississippi were acquiring real estate and taxable property. They felt that this posed a threat to the economic control that had long been exclusively in the hands of white landowners. Now, Crosby, he assumed his role as the sheriff and took office on January the 1st, 1874. And on December the 2nd, 1874, 11 months after Crosby took position as sheriff, members of the White Taxpayer League, a.k.a. the White League, went to Crosby's office and demanded his resignation. The White League had put false charges on Crosby and were using them to demand that he resign. Now, before we continue, I would like to give you all a little refresher on the White League. I mean, I talk about them in my previous videos, but just in case you forgot or haven't had the pleasure to watch. The White League was pretty much a group of Confederate veterans in Louisiana that was a branch of the Ku Klux Klan or the KKK formed in March of 1874. The White League, now they claimed they were defenders of a hereditary civilization and Christianity. Now they stated their purpose was, and I quote, the extermination of the carpetbag element and restoration of white supremacy. Now the group, they openly operated to eliminate the reconstruction government by terrorizing freed people to keep them from voting, political organization, and receiving adequate education. And they targeted local Republican office holders for assassinations. Now remember, many blacks were Republicans at this time. Now the White League, they were also responsible for taking the life of Julia Hayden, a 17 year old school teacher for a free people school in Tennessee. They took her life three days after she started in the fall of 1874. Now, I wanted to fill you all in on that before we move on, but back to the story. Now, the White League, they went to Crosby's office and they demanded he resign, but Crosby, he refused. And when Crosby refused, the White League, they left but only to return with the mob of about 600 armed white men. Now the mob, they surrounded the Warren County Courthouse and forced Crosby to resign at gunpoint. And Crosby, he took a good look around at the armed mob and he realized that he and his supporters that were present that day, that they were outnumbered. So he obliged. Crosby signed the resignation papers and resigned from his position as sheriff. Now, Crosby, he resigned, but not before calling for help from government officials. But little did any of them know the events that took place on this day would lead to the Vicksburg Massacre. Monday, December the 7th, 1874, Crosby along with black citizens of Vicksburg who supported him, they decided to come together and regain his office and position as sheriff. 
So they got up, they marched down to the courthouse unarmed and clueless as to what lied before them. When they got within Vicksburg city limits, they were met by a large white mob. And the large white mob, they demanded that they turn around and return to their homes. Now, seeing that they were outnumbered and they were unarmed, most of the black citizens, they turned on around as they were told by the white mobs and they headed on back home. Now, one would think it was all over at this point, right? I mean, Crosby had resigned, the white mob now had control, and the black citizens, they had turned around and were heading back home. But no, it was actually far from over. Everything was actually just beginning. Now, when the unarmed black citizens departed and began to head home, the white mob opened fire and took the lives of several black citizens. And now they didn't stop there. Now, as I stated earlier, they were just getting started. So after opening fire, the white mob, they went on a lynching spree. They began terrorizing and attacking dozens of black citizens. And then forces from Louisiana, they joined the white mob and they went on a 10 day war path, terrorizing and lynching all throughout town. And during the midst of it all, Crosby, he was in prison. And while he was in prison, he was forced to resign yet again. And when it was all said and done, an estimated 75 to 300 black lives were taken, according to the reports. And after the massacre, federal troops, they came in and they restored order And they reinstated Crosby as sheriff. Now, of course, nothing was ever done about the massacre or the lives taken. I mean, as with all other massacres in history, right? I mean, there was no prosecution. No one brought to justice. mm, Pretty much no nothing. And after Crosby was reinstated as sheriff, he hired a white man by the name of J.P. Gilmer as one of his deputies. Now, Gilmer, he was very insubordinate and he refused to follow Crosby's orders. So Crosby, he attempted to have Gilmer removed from office. But when Crosby attempted to have Gilmer removed, Gilmer put a bullet in Crosby's head on June the 7th, 1875. Now, remarkably, Crosby, he survived. And Gilmer, he was arrested for attempting to take Crosby's life. However, Gilmer was never brought to trial for his crime. And like I said, Crosby, he survived, but he never made a full recovery. The remainder of Crosby's term as sheriff, it was served through a white citizen. And Crosby unfortunately passed away at the age of 40 on March the 5th, 1884. Well, that brings us to the end of today's chat. But tell me what you all think. I mean, how do you feel about what happened to Crosby? And what do you think about the White League? I mean, why do you think it took the troops so long to come in and restore order? It's like they appeared after the massacre was over or near the end. I mean, please drop your thoughts in the comments below. Please like the video. Please share the video. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all. We've met our threshold of a thousand subscribers. I really appreciate you all. And until next time, peace, love, and blessings.